You love podcasts. The stories, the laughs, the unexpected turns. But when this episode ends, the silence starts. Not anymore. Audiobooks.com turns that silence into your next great adventure. With over 450,000 titles, from bestsellers to hidden gems, your love for listening just found its new best friend. And because you already know the joy of audio, we're giving you three free audiobooks to start your journey. Imagine your favorite podcast, now with unlimited episodes. That's audiobooks.com. Keep the story going. Sign up for your free trial at audiobooks.com slash podcast free today. Because for podcast lovers like you, the end of an episode is just the beginning. That's audiobooks.com slash podcast F-R-E-E. And now, Hangar 56 Media presents Spike's Car Radio, a downloadable cars and coffee, hosted by writer, comedian, and automotive enthusiast, Spike Ferriston. Now, here's Spike. Oh yeah, Dr. John. You know, you, told me you know what's good about this song? I was on the way here. I'll post a picture of, uh, I lost my cigar holder, so I had my cigar in my mouth driving out to Zuckerman's here in Baldwin Hills. Look on Instagram right now, that's me. Listen to crappy electronic music and then suddenly Spotify just spits this out. Dr. John, cold, cold, cold. Big tubby guy with a piano. And real music analog. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Dr. John. And you know, Dr. John has been around a lot of the shows that I've done in the past, and I never really never really got Dr. John, but today I got Dr. John. I'm gonna turn that down. Just how clean listen to this. You guys can't hear it, but it's just drums. Piano. Just the basics. No, no synthesizers. Where do you get Captain Beefheart? Captain Beefheart. How are you guys? Welcome to Spike's Car Radio. We've got a great show for you. It's Friday night. It's Friday night. Woo. Johnny Lieberman's back. Zuckerman's here. Uh, that crazy kid Richard is here. If you're wondering if he's less crazy, he's more crazy. He and just beat you up. He just attacked me, <laughs> which I'm fine with. I have boys. I understand. And he's got a snaggle tooth. All his teeth have fallen out except for one that's dropped. Right beneath his nose there. <laughs> so he, if, you pull, if you pull on it, you know what's going to happen? <laughs> if you get near his mouth, he'll bite your finger. Yeah. He's, yeah. In, he's in that kind of mood tonight. And, Is uh, he going to shit everywhere? <laughs> no. That was, he, he didn't do that last time. <laughs> yeah, he, was, he did. He was eating jelly <laughs> with on the his carpet. hands. <laughs> My poor son. He's but here we are, right? yeah. the dumb dads, letting I'm him do it again. I'm going to shit myself. <laughs> <clears throat> Let it be known. Okay. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing all right. I can't tell if the world is falling apart or if everything's okay or if we're collectively losing our minds or if I'm just projecting. We, I, I don't. I don't. Just I can't depends tell. where you look and where you listen. We got you three think? years left. I think. I think it's all over in three years. <clears throat> I think it just is that, or is that just a, a an old man belief? Well, if you're if you're stressing, yeah. if you're stressed, uh, at least enjoy our show for the next hour. Hopefully, we can relieve that stress because now I'm I'm happy. I'm happy when I'm here podcasting. The week's let up. It's midweek for you guys and girls, but whatever. And we're going to talk about cars and whatever, whatever else uh, pops into my head. And right now, I'll tell you what that is. Yeah. <laughs> Edwin Castro. <laughs> Do you know who Edwin Castro is? No. Okay. Edwin Castro won two billion dollars. Oh, well, that ball. guy! That guy, and huh? how what? he was—he uh, lived in Altadena. I forget he had some regular working class job. Didn't make a lot of money. He won two billion dollars, and this guy, Edwin Castro, is doing it right. Right. He immediately bought two beautiful houses in the Hollywood Hills and a house for his parents in Altadena, and was photographed. Uh, and it was reported by the Daily Mail, I think, who had it incorrectly, with his two hundred and fifty thousand dollar new vintage Porsche, which to me just looked like an eighties Targa. <laughs> Targa, not yes. Eleven, which is worth what sixty thousand? Didn't matter. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right moves. Nice car. This, this guy's making the right. He's moves. making the right moves. Yeah, yeah. Right. 
we're watching. We all dream of what it would be like to win a couple billion dollars. In reality, you won nine hundred million dollars. Well, kind that of was the, same the cash. Thing. He cashed the out cash. nine yeah. fifty-seven so million. Yeah, and right. he immediately, like that fellow we were talking about last year in, in in Monterey, this guy is immediately just upgraded his entire life. Bought a twenty million dollar house that is absolutely gorgeous. He's got a nice vintage car. I would like. Uh, Mr. Castro to come on the show if anybody knows Mr. Castro. Yeah. Please let us know. I want to know if he's getting more of everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's got a security guard. He like nice. immediately just pushed the entourage button and just said, it is time to party. And that's that's what he needs to do. That's right. How I, old I, the I, guy? How old he's guy? young. He looks young. 30s or something. No, oh, even younger. 30s. Oh. He's, uh, we're all living, living vicariously through this guy. I, I, you know, I don't want him to spend all his money, but I do want to see him have a good time. Well, like you're saying. The if the, if you, two $20 million houses, you still have $960 million left. I think he just bought one. <laughs> oh, okay. But he bought it a was, house. The second one was the $5 million house. Uh, yeah, for his uh, mom. Okay. But, but but I like but the two houses. It that's seems the, like the... every other day there's Edwin Castro news here yeah. in L.A., yeah. and I like all of it, and I want him to kind of stay out of the limelight. I think he should come on our show, and we should talk cars, because th- we can open up his collection for him. I he, think you, you want to get rid of the bodyguard. That's not a good look. You don't need a bodyguard. Yeah, well, you got to, when you got a billion dollars cash. He was walking out of the bank, so he needed the oh, bodyguard. Oh, at the bank, sure. But, sure. you know... Uh, car choices. It's he. He bought a Porsche. He's one of us, I think. And I would like to start planning that collection with him. We're I mean, going to help he, him with the cars he and the ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> he's coming. <'Cause> like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Edwin <laughs> Castro. Well, that's. Don't you think that's why Edwin Castro moved to Hollywood and got the car? Yes, <laughs> right above. He's the getting sunsets. the right moves. Yeah. I don't know that that's the car that you would go out on a date on. But he's... They come to me. (sighs) But he's definitely got the setup above the Sunset Strip. You know what that's like. You go down to Sunset. So you remember those days? Yes. You go down to Sunset in your Range Rover usually, and you'd meet girls, and then you go back up to your house. Pack the the Range Rover with them. Yeah, that's what we used to do. (laughs) Three rows. I was always surprised that that most of these uh, young ladies had their bathing suits on underneath. Like They knew they wanted to swim. Maybe that was just the 90s, but... It was not hard. They couldn't hey. afford on the wish. <laughs> no, it was a thing. <laughs> this guy's probably going to drown me. <laughs> I don't. It's not, it wasn't just the women. It was just everybody liked to go swimming well, in the sure, summertime sure, in L.A. Sure. So you'd go out and have a few drinks, come back and go to the pool. Go. Oh, wait, I, I was around L.A. Did you I not never do got, this? Oh, wait, I was not successful like you at that point in time. I was unsuccessful, and I wasn't meeting anyone that was wearing a bikini under their clothes. I can't say that I was really that successful, but I did. Meet a lot of girls that had bikinis on, and and boy, by the way, guys, everybody seemed to have a yeah. bathing suit. I thought this was just California. You were always prepared to swim, either at the beach <laughs> or up at the pool. Preferably, though, drunk in a swimming pool at yeah. two or three in the morning. I can't imagine how many nice families I upset with my horrible behavior. Right, but I know they're out there, and I'm I hope sorry. they're still talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> they did. I did run into one guy. Who who said asked me where I lived and I told him the house and he said, Oh, wait a minute, you're not you're not right there. You're not that guy. And I said, Yeah, that that's me. Why? And uh turns out his client was uh, a family man who lived behind me and at the time we were known for having bands over at three in the morning on Saturday night and we weren't good neighbors, but But you had bad neighbors too. Remember the lady with the dog? And- <laughs> that was a fun neighborhood. Yeah, her, she used to walk her dog onto our lawn to go to the bathroom. And then when I, uh, she wouldn't pick up. When I called her on it, she just said, fuck you. I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that was, she worked for ICM. I believe. Yeah. She was an agent in ICM. Uh, I think Zucker was coaching her. Yeah. <laughs> what do I say? You say, fuck you. <laughs> I, it was the first time that I picked up dog shit with a glove and threw it at someone's front door <laughs> at 70 miles an hour. <laughs> that was the first time that I did that. What was the second time? <laughs> her again. Oh, okay. Because she never stopped. Right. It was an empty pleasure. She wasn't there to enjoy it, but I remember I had a nice fastball with that one. <laughs> it's funny, the second you leave Hollywood, those problems seem to disappear, Zuckerman. Again, the 405 to, for me is the politeness boundary. When you get on the other side of the 405, these people are, seem to be a little nicer. Little. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. 
We're come. here. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know if you saw this. This is made for us, this story. Motor Trend. That's us. Aired a roadkill oh, episode with a man covered in Nazi tattoos. Yes, we did. Oh. <laughs> Let's get him along with the other guy. Let's get him and Edwin on so, together. All right, hang on. So here's what happened. I, okay. I know a little bit about this. Okay. Yeah, this happened. It was roadkill. They were in Alabama. There was a dude who like ran a scrapyard or a salvage yard, including and, animals. And he he had uh, like an SS tattoo, and he had like thirteen and whatever some other dumb number. Some you know thirteens like the you know the thirteen words about whatever. And the, no one noticed it at the time. It made it through the edit process. And then Twitter, of course, went ballistic on it. And then we took the video down. Um, <laughs> it was, uh, it's hard to believe that that made it through the edit it's process. It's very hard to believe it made it through the edit process. But, I mean, you could say that, you know, maybe people don't quite know what that stuff means. Really? There, well, it was a number, I mean, the, the SS number tattoo, 13, for sure. You know, like the number That's 24. That's a biker thing. The, yeah. The 13. We're, we're, we're recording. It's the 23. Hold on, hold on. We're, we're busy. What's up? No, no. Come here. Uh, oh, anyway. Richard. So, Richard's first interrupt. Here he goes. Wait, yeah. Let me tell you what was here. Yeah, yeah, here we go. A shield tattoo with the Nazi SS logo, and the number's 14 and 23. The SS logo is pretty self-explanatory, but the 14 references a popular white supremacist credo, which happens to be 14 words long. I won't repeat why, because I don't care. Uh, a code of conduct for members of an Alabama prison gang, the Southern Brotherhood. <laughs> <laughs> Later in the episode, there's a long shot of another set of tattoos with a ghoul or a zombie that kind of looks like Hitler. <laughs> How does it kind of look like Hitler, which has another partial SS logo on his face? So somehow this made it. Through. How many mistakes do you have to? Does <clears throat> Motor Trend have to mistake to accomplish this? Motor Trend in, in Discovery. This, this is pretty big. Pretty big because, and I'll, here's why, and Johnny just had to go take care of his uh, son, but here's why I don't quite believe it. Tattoos these days have to be cleared when they're on the air. Johnny, did you know this? Go ahead. Here, jump on. What, what, did I know which? Whenever there's tattoo art or any sort of graffiti, it has to be cleared by a legal department at a network. You can't, we, you have, we, to, you have yes. to make sure the rights are secured, which would mean those tattoos visible might have to be cleared. So, and someone so, would look at it, a lawyer would see it. This was brought up, and this policy has changed since this, before this article came out. The policy has been changed. So, yes. What now, do you mean the policy has been changed? Exactly what you just said. From they now didn't on, have it, all in other words. Artwork. Yeah. Well, now, now we're. It was just never an issue. You know what I mean? It was just it, never an issue. It's definitely an issue at Discovery, uh, Well, which is your parent company. Yes. Look, here's what I would like to say. Uh, you know, the, 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 I'm Jewish. The editor-in-chief of Motor Trend is Chinese. The CEO of Motor Trend is Jewish. David, David Zaslov, who runs Discovery, HBO, blah, blah. He's Jewish. Like, we don't, you know... We don't like Nazis at all. Right. No one we, No one said you did. Yeah. So, like, it was an oversight. It was probably, you know, the person editing, who knows what country they came from. They may not recognize what SS is. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, who know, What do you mean, who knows what country they came from? I don't know. Do who you did have the, uh, overseas editors? No, but we have, like, you know, kids. Late from, at night in the Philippines? Yeah. Somebody's I mean, editing? I don't, I don't know. You know, they don't, who knows? Come on, you know, Lieberman. You know, us, us it's not people, your fault, Lieberman. You don't have people to be in a- are supposed to have some brains, and you've just identified like a half a dozen Jews who let this slip past. <laughs> uh, look, it, it was it, it's a mistake. They we took it down. They should have said like you know we d- also denounce Nazism. That would have been nice, but. Aside from that, I mean, that implied. Was, <laughs> well, I mean, this, this idiot. I saw this article. This stupid. Uh, they kind of imply that, like, well, they didn't say they hate Nazis, so maybe they like them. You know? Do you know when I saw it, how happy I got? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I know. It's I know a perfect story well. for you guys. Yeah, he loves Nazi stories, <laughs> and it's your network. I was so happy. I was like, let's do a whole show on this. But uh, oh, fortunately, it doesn't warrant that. Anyway, I wasn't yeah. going to even take that anywhere. You didn't even need to comment on it, Johnny. It's not your fault. Some other idiot over yeah, there. Yeah, it was his fault. Are you think, You sure? Blame me, Johnny. We like blaming him. It's time to give a shout out to one of our favorite new sponsors in skincare, Caldera Lab. 
backed by a leading clinical trial where 9 out of 10 men experienced healthier and visibly improved skin. What did you say, Zuckerman, when I walked in? You said you look terrific. <laughs> Guess what? I have been using Caldera Lab. They reached out to me over Instagram. They couldn't have been more thrilled uh, that they are on the show. And they sent me a giant box of stuff, which I began using right away. How come you never share? I've got it for you guys. Do you want it? I'd like some skin care. Okay, here's what. Listen, listen to what I've done here. And I, yeah, and I the there's a done? little bit of a risk here that I'm going to say this, but but uh, last Sunday, both kids were out of the house. My wife called. She goes, hey, "We have a rare afternoon with no kids. What do you want to do?" I said, "Open that box in the uh, bathroom there," and there was a, a mask. And <laughs> <laughs> when I got home, she and I put on this Caldera Lab uh, mask. Mud mask with volcanic <laughs> ash and things, and we sat like girls on the carpet and ma- and did a mask. And my skin was am- it was amazing. I had never done one before. Oh, you had Chardonnay. You gossiped. We did. did we talked like girls. Did you but you cry? It was, it was fun. Was there crying? No. But let me tell you. Okay. Inside this bundle, you'll get. Uh, from Caldera Lab. The clean slate, the base layer, and the good. The clean slate is where you start your day. It's a balancing cleanser that uses gentle plant-based cleansing. This is something I had not I had not been doing. Eric had been on me for about 10 years going, why aren't you washing your face? Now I wash it at the end of the day. The base layer, nutrient-dense, fortifying moisturizer that hydrates your skin. The good, the go-to at night, before bed, clinically proven, multifunctional serum that helps your skin look tighter, smoother, and helps reduce visibility of wrinkles and fine lines. I've been doing it for three weeks. You, I have noticed a difference. You didn't wash your face before bed? No, but I'm usually showering after, because I play tennis at night, pretty much every night. Okay, so that But I didn't it. use a special facial cleanser and then have a routine at night, right? And part of the reason I like the Caldera Lab, not to keep belaboring this, but is it's it's quick. It's one or two products. It's an eye cream. It's a thing. You do it in the morning. Do a different thing at night. And I'm noticing a difference, and you guys should check it out. Uh, get 20% off with our code SPIKE911 at calderalab.com. That's 20% off at calderalab.com by using SPIKE911, or you can go to calderalab.com slash SPIKE911, and the code is already there. Check it out. No, but I had not been doing that stuff. But as you get older, Zuck, you got you to moisture. Yeah, you got to take care. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have yeah, perfect skin. Will it take off? Will it take off the Nazi tattoos? <laughs> they got a product for that. All right. Before I know, I know we're supposed to talk about cars, but I just want to address the eight thousand messages that you and I both oh, God, got for the love of God about this possibly true, possibly not true story about a gentleman who put in a metal butt plug. <laughs> and then went to his MRI. I saw that. And then the magnetic resonance somehow shot Turned the it bo- into a rail gun <laughs> in his body. <laughs> rail first, gun. first of all, Zuckerman, you said that lawyer is a real lawyer that has that case. Yes. So He's you a can, lawyer. You can confirm at least that piece of the story. Does an MRI, is it that magnetic? That yeah, it was, it's called a magnetic resonance imaging. But, 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 but hold on. I thought that just meant the magnetic... Uh, waves would reflect off of it. No, 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 no. It's a magnet, and this is why you can't go in with certain metal hardware inside, because it will heat up and try to pull out of your body. Um, Here's the part about... Is it that strong? Yes. Yeah, it is. So in theory, this could actually have... It could happen. There's always stories about somebody forgot they had a nipple ring or something, and it got, like, yanked. Here's a couple uh, of things that we... Uh, that uh, I, hang on. Hey, Richard, we're talking nipple rings. Oh. <laughs> what? Richard, you got to go poop? <laughs> Richard is at the door. Okay. <laughs> You're still hungry? <laughs> what is he saying? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, it's not good. I know. What, we're is, try- what is he saying? So, he doesn't want to smoke in cigars. We're trying to quit. We're trying oh, to Oh, yeah, yeah. Go watch yeah. Peter Pan. That's how we talk. But you're right, Richard. Okay, you're I'll be right. there in a minute. We'll quit right okay. after this. I'm, I'm <clears throat> listeners. I'm sorry. Right. Now, I, I've <laughs> they love Richard. They I've love researched Richard. a couple of things. First yes. of all, I didn't understand why there would be metal in a butt plug. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so so first of all, isn't that just a choice? No, it, it was not a. It was a rubber butt plug, but it had a metal core, okay. and I don't think Mister Butt Plug Wearer knew that. Now. 
they ask you, I've had a couple of MRIs, and they ask you. I if, thought he was going to say I had a couple, <laughs> had a couple, of, couple plug, of plug plugs I, in. I, I prefer porcelain spike. I don't know. Okay, so we've all had MRIs. Right. I just so, had one on my knee. I know exactly what So they what ask a lot of questions. Yes. And you got to be some kind of a weird joker to, to go there, to go to your medical appointment, with a butt plug in, and then not say anything. <laughs> they ask you. Over and they over again. They ask you over and over and Sir, over again. Sir, do you have a butt plug in? Yeah. Now, <laughs> but the part I didn't know, because I researched this, I said, if it, what kind of a rubber butt plug has metal in it? But apparently, yes, that's, they can have a metal core then. <laughs> Wow. This is what we do as attorneys. Why do you think, where does, where does the rail gun analogy come in? Some idiot. Some idiot lawyer I mean, like me. I know what a rail gun funny. <laughs> The type of guy thinks it's funny. Hey, we sit around talking. Why don't we, why don't we, we'll call it a rail gun instead of a shit missile. <laughs> and it went from his behind where? Into his lungs? Up into his stomach, something. Oh, I, I will tell cavity. you. And did, I, so do you think this guy, this no, was just exactly. his like... There's no or something. Case. There's no yeah, but what case. was he do? Why did he do it? Because he thought it would be fun, something to do when he's in the MRI. Machine? That's what I'm saying. I have no idea. I don't know. This smells like a fake story. I will say when I saw it, it smells, I did. I did immediately. It smells fishy or it smells like BS. What is? I, I immediately tagged Zuckerman when I saw it. Okay, and then yes, and then now, please, listeners. About a thousand people have emailed me this same yes. dumb story, or saying, in case you haven't seen, I have seen. We've seen, we've spoken about it, now we're done. We've put it to bed. I, I can't imagine the lawyer filing this. He must have thought there'd be publicity, but he's turned... I, I, I think he's a laughing stock at this point. Wow. There you go. I, I, well, there think, was publicity. But there is no case, because like you, you the, the guy shouldn't have had a butt it's plug called in. assumption of the risk. Yeah. It's, it, you, you broke all the rules. You were given informed consent. You were given instructions. You willingly, stupidly, negligently for care of yourself went in. And you realize, you put on the gown, the back is open. So I don't know what he's... <laughs> what he, they were supposed to... Is the lawyer going to say they should have seen it hanging out and warned him, hey, you've got a butt plug in there. <laughs> Why is there a feather coming between your cheeks? I'm just trying to I'm just trying to imagine Paul at the office, the way he dresses, like, you know, Googling butt plugs. <laughs> All of that us. seems just like a day, a normal day at the office for him fair fair but like what's inside of them <laughs> yeah, because that well, was it's relevant to me we no, I know. Around. rubber with metal inside i you know i never checked <laughs> yeah, yes the construction i becomes, just put them in i don't, I don't a point check. for our our education as personal injury lawyers hey i drove uh i've been working on that le mans documentary I oh you were hanging out with lonnie did a day of shooting with Lonnie Unser? Yeah. Who is the daughter of Johnny Unser. Yeah. Um, got a nice note from him after we shot. And uh, we were up in the canyons with uh, the cameras, uh, knifing uh, canyons above Malibu and talking about Lama history. And I was in a 996 GT3 from uh, our friend Kenny, who's one of our listeners. Thank you, Kenny. Dentist, by the way. And I had not uh, driven 996 GT3 in quite some time, Zuckerman, and I had forgotten how great a car that is. Very Analog. Special. A couple of cars Very I want to talk about today. And Analog. I, and I always say I shouldn't talk about them because then they're going to start disappearing when we, we start. I, I think anything with a GT3 is already. Nah, that the 996 GT3 we brought up before. And, it, and it's, you know, I'd been talking about it without actually experiencing it since I'd owned one, and I forgot. What a great GT3 that is. What a simple, great, muscular GT3 that is. And a really special construction, if I recall correctly. So it seam welded, magnesium roof. Really, they they made the a... The Mezger re- engine. Yeah. So the, the 996.1 was the first ever GT3, yeah. and we never got it. Uh, and then... Uh, that was in Andy's, 1999. Andy's first car was the point two. Um, so that car you drove is the first thing that Andy ever did at Porsche, or right? A Porsche GT, and you feel it the second you put your hands on the steering wheel. You yeah. go, "I am in something different." It's got a very thick steering wheel with two little nubs on it, and then you start moving through the gears, and you go, "This, this is really fun." And it's small now. I remember thinking that car was really big, yeah, yeah. and now it's tiny. I got a chance to drive the point one. 
um, they they brought one out, and uh, it was funny because like it was it was you know engines phenomenal, gearbox phenomenal, steering great, suspension was like a little felt old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that I was going to say coming down the hill at speed and with Lonnie on my tail, who knows how to wheel. Oh yeah, it was a little it was a little dicey. We were on a different canyon. We you know we started up at Encinal, then we went somewhere else on a road I hadn't been on, which was just absolutely stunning. Was I mean, it Deer, LA Deer right Creek? Yeah, Deer Creek, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's the most beautiful th- road in the world. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And yeah. the amount of rain we had, oh, it, it was it was just a yeah. different kind of Malibu. Wildflowers everywhere in California, greenery. Right I went off-roading this morning. Like, California is just gorgeous. Oh, it's gorgeous. spectacular. Gorgeous. So yeah. we're just jamming on this empty road that had a couple of boulders, <laughs> but <laughs> nobody on it. So we're just having a little fun. Yeah. And, you know, with cameras and drones and, uh, you know, you forget... You're shooting, and you're like, what could this possibly look like? And then Robert Dalrymple, who's directing, he said, hey, check the, check this out. Start showing us these drone shots and these chase shots. It's insane, and they were right? Just delicious. I got one of the best photos ever taken of me. Was, was I was in a, a 356 coming down, and it was a chase yeah. shot, and just the ocean. Yeah. You know, it's just. If you it, miss like a turn. Like in December. Oh, you you're miss, dead. Yeah, you're yeah. dead. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful, but it just drops. But Lonnie's the one you want. I mean, she, she, was, in my, <laughs> she was in my class at Pikes Peak. Oh yeah, that's yeah, right. She, she raced kicked Pikes my beat. ass. Yeah, she really beat me good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's a question that I have for you: Is it in? Just say it on the is mic. Is it in? <laughs> is it in? The, does it run in the family? Is it? What's that? Is it the the, this ability? Thing? Yes. Is it the ability to drive? The I had the all of this. I mean, it, reaction, the fearlessness. Is it an inherited trait? Sometimes. It, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I know. I know many children of famous race car drivers that can't drive at all. But but you know, you look at look at like Justin Bell, who was on last week, right? Yeah. Same thing. One, they see dear old dad. Well, yeah, one Le Mans, uh, like um, uh, 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 Donner, uh, David. I'm oh, sorry, David Donahue. You know, Mark right, Donahue's right. kid. Like, dude, he's a good driver. He's. I think. Lo- I think driver. I remember Lonnie saying she remembered being at the Indy 500 with her dad when yeah. she was two years old. Right. One of her first memories. But did any of the Oncers drive Lamont? Yeah, her dad did. Yeah. Really? In a Corvette. I think. Her her family though, I think her like great grand grandfather or something was drove the first Pikes Peak like a hundred years ago. That's how long the Oncers have been going up Pikes Peak. So it's wild. So. Uh, oh. Anyway, that 996 GT3. Couldn't stop thinking about it. She was in a C2S, 98 C2S, last of the air-cooled 911s. And, you know, half the time I wanted to switch cars. <laughs> and so you just, they, they were just two great 911s. They, I could not have been happier. What a day. It was just such a great day. We, you know, we ended up shooting. I thought we were going to shoot for a couple hours. We ended up shooting from about 8 until 4. And we were in Trancus. They have a terrific supermarket there, Zuckerman. You it's go great. in there, unbelievable yes. food. Yeah, yes. so vintage just market. Basing out of there, drinking too much coffee, eating crappy food, and then they going have back good up. Coffee. We oh go to the man, coffee bar but everything. Time. Yeah, that's so, a that's a big competitor. We should be doing cars and coffee up there again. When you 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 mentioned the the suspension or chassis, the, the suspension of the nine nine six or the handling, do you, you think it's really antiquated? It felt it just felt a little less reliable in so the you, front. So you know Frank from Porsche, Frank uh, Wiesman. Yeah. So when I was we drove, I drove the nine nine six, then I drove a four point oh. Right. And right. I was and I was saying, I'm like, man, there's a difference in the suspension. And he, I remember he looks at me, he goes, "There's a point in time when that when suspension changed and went from old to modern. And that point was the nine nine seven. Ah, it was like uh, oh, very yeah, good point. yeah. But I didn't hate it. I just yeah. I, I felt it's just not as capable as other GT3s. But that is fun in its own way. But it's more analog. Yeah, it's and way it's way more analog. The, the shifter is fin- the one I drove at least. The shifter was just so great. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, But there you go. There's a car. Oh, that's awesome. The other car that's been fascinating is uh, I finally got around. Uh, finally got time to drive Zuckerman's. 1995-993 Cabriolet, uh, a fairly unremarkable 911 cab that Zuckerman has been raving about That's for the what, one I drove. six yeah. months. That's the blue one yeah. I drove? You got to drive it. I got it dyno tuned. You got to drive it. Finally, I, dr- I drove it and I lost my mind. Zuckerman That's... has created something here with uh, TLG, Marco, this dyno tuning. First of all, now, I, I remember driving a 993, and I owned a, nine, a 98 993, and this car has a flow to it like no 993 I have ever driven, right? It's a magic carpet. 
Forget cab or coupe. That wasn't what I was loving about it. You're right. It's a magic carpet of smooth acceleration and smooth shifting where, there, you know, I, I've got that car with the point you don't even feel a shudder when you're shifting gears. And yeah. There's just flow to it. So tell everybody what you <laughs> did to this car. I'm going to start by saying it's, it's real explain quick. what dyno tuning. I'm going to I'm going to say something really quick. And as you said, it's an unremarkable car, and I always thought a 993 Turbo would lack rigidity and would not drive you mean well. A, a cabriolet, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, cabriolet. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. a 993 cabriolet. So I always just thought it was not a car I would ever want. So getting in that car initially surprised me that it was so nice. Before you get to the dyno tune, because you let me drive it, and I was, it just felt brand fucking new like it didn't feel like it had a mile on it you know yeah, what I mean? but it even so, new it didn't drive like no that. i know but there was there wasn't a rattle there was you know it's just a, a no, 30 it's a tight, car yeah twenty thousand miles on it yeah it's a good great right example black black okay yeah. so so what they do is this it's somebody might call that chipping a dyno tuning they 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 take a, a new chip and they put it on a dyno and they adjust the air fuel mixture to get maximum efficiency out of it because the the chip that's in all 993 is it's chip what does this chip look like it's an obd1 oh. chip it's a little thing that plugs in yeah it's a right. computer chip okay yeah. and so what porsche has to do they have to take an off the rack approach one size fits all so that they get the best ride out of the entire world because the world is different circumstances you know different environments different gasolines and so what the obd1 that comes in the 993 is good it's gonna it's gonna be a good drive in all applications but what what we're doing here is we're gonna put a tank of la gas in we're going to put a full tank in there, and we're going to put it on the dyno, and we're going to adjust the fuel-air mixture for maximum efficiency. Yeah, optimize at, it. It's optimizing. And what is the horsepower normally, 250 or something? Or? Is it 250? It's, it's something like, is, I think it's 256 okay. at the, it, uh, on one of those cars, and you pick up, you pick up about 12% on horsepower and torque. And, and so you, you do feel that, but more than anything, you feel how smooth the engine is. It's a big upgrade in smoothness. Right. Like, if, really big. If you would turn on your regular untuned 993, it's going to go on. You're going to get a big dip in RPMs as it's warming up. It's going to be lumpy. When you go to step on the gas, there might be a little hesitation. Uh, none of that now, no. right? Yeah, zero. It starts In fact, it, dry, it drove better than the 98s that I've driven, which are different, right? Because right, those are Vario that's, Cam. That's, and, yeah, Vario Ram and LBD2, so you can't do the dyno tuning quite as easily and readily. Is right. that right? Did I get this all right, Lee? It sounds correct to me. I was yeah. just going to say, I had a friend with, a, he had a, my friend Dom had an a 86 that he chipped, and it was, you know, just magic. It was like... This is what it should have been from the factory. And just, you know, it's just well, a little computer tweet. It's like a tailored suit now. Yeah, I yeah. called yes. Zuckerman immediately and said, we have to corner the market in 1995, <laughs> 993s, because but, that's the only year that, that you can do it, right? Well, you or, can do it, I think, between on vehicles like 85 to 95. It, with the OBD one system. Yeah, but I, don't Porsche, know, I don't know when OBD two came in, but yeah. But, yeah, but Porsche is particularly. You can get a lot more out of a Porsche, from what I understand, when you tune it. For whatever reason, if you try to take a BMW of similar vintage, which is running an OBD1, you won't get quite as much juice out of it. The Porsches really uh, respond to this So they treatment. were basically showing up a little, you know, toned down. And now you know what it reminded me of? Like, just tuning a guitar perfectly. Yeah. Like, yeah, like having a like you have a guitar, it it's, it's in tune, it's close, and then you put it on something electronic and you get it exact. Oh, 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 that's exactly. what it felt like. It's like this car feels so exact. I wasn't responding to the bump in speed so much as I was responding to the smoothness that's and the perfect, smoothness of the acceleration. Th that car shocked me because 911 cabs, until recently, yeah, who like cares? modern metal. It's you know, a big who cares? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, look, mod modern, hot, like really, I forget what they call it, very high strength steel is like, it's so rigid that you don't get cow shake. But that one is like mad. I got lucky. Yeah. That thing's I got been, lucky. Like, I got it from uh, our friend Paul Kramer at Auto Kennel. And, and it was. Uh, we got dogs and we got cars. <laughs> cars and dogs. <laughs> at the Auto Kennel. Dogs in the cars. They drive the cars. <laughs> He's a sweetheart. We love Paul. But I yeah. did tell him, I go, Kennel? Really? Kennel? Anyway. Um, it's a great car, but I want to drive the other one now. So the other car is a 964, right? Yeah, 93 964. 
So once again, it's very amenable. To and you're saying this, I'm going to have the same experience. Yes. In that. You're going to get the best 964 ride. Okay. Mm. It's in the garage. I have some issues with the 964. Mm. This is going to be good. Uh oh, hold on. Here comes Richard again. Uh oh. He's back. He's just going to look around. Oh. Give him a cigar. He's enjoying the view. He's old enough. He's yeah. five. He's six. Come six. So. All right. Let me do an ad while you talk to Richard. Yeah. It looks like he's going to go poop in the pool. <laughs> My poor son. Our next partner is Athletic Greens. And as you know, I take AG1 every day. Literally every day. Because I want to play fierce tennis. And I need energy, and I need my bones to not hurt after I play tennis. And also, because I hate taking pills, I just want to take one pack of AG1 in the morning, which I put in water, and then get everything done all at once. You know, it's hard for me to keep up with that supplement routine. And it's also hard to trust uh, that you know where your supplements come from and who to trust. But AG1 makes that so much easier. Very quickly, I noticed a lot of differences. Beautiful digestion great sleep. That could also be the tennis and just really ruining myself every night. Um, why take a bunch of different things when you can just mix one scoop of powder in water once a day? AG1 was designed with ease in mind so you can live healthier and better without having to do a lot. Um, my AG1 is delivered to me every month and it's been super easy to use and make a daily habit. So if you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash spike911. That's athleticgreens.com slash spike911. And uh, there you go. You get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. There you go. We love you, AG1. And Caldera Lab. We got great sponsors right now. I'm really happy with all the sponsors. All the sponsors. All the money. Good. He's yeah. going to jump over the fucking side of the hill. Now he's on the other side <laughs> of the pool. Him back later. The dumb dads aren't even paying attention. Can he swim yet? Yeah, yeah, he can swim. Yeah. All right. Hey, quiet. We're doing a show over yeah, here. I warned him like seven times, like, we're going to be working. Go watch Peter Pan. But no, this is... Has he seen Peter Pan? He's seen it 15 times, I think, is the problem. Yeah. All right. Hang on. What? Yeah. It's funny. So you're reading into what he's saying. He's asking, Chad. He's asking how deep the pool is. Not tonight. Did he say he could still pee in it? No, be in it. He could oh. be in it. Yeah, oh. yeah. You should pee in it. Not tonight. Watch, watch Peter Pan. Jesus, I'm sorry, boys. Nobody cares. Okay. Um, it's been quite a show already. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, GT4RS is finished, Zuckerman. I got, I got, uh, I got the email from the guys from Finally. Mike in Florida, but it's still in in Germany or where, wherever the hell it, it's done. But it was confirmed, done, finished. Now what? A boat ride? Yeah. Hopefully it makes it. Yeah. And what? A month? Month and a half? At the rate they're going. I have no expectations. I if it okay. gets if it ever gets here. This was the car that was showing up in March, right? Um, it was supposed okay. to be here in December. But, okay, yeah, but it's fine. Right on, right on. Schedule. Whenever it gets here, whenever it gets terrific. here, it gets here. We don't care. Now, what about the Spider RS? Oh, yeah, uh, we got a call about that too, Zuckerman. And that's a good looking. Uh, that's thing. gonna be killer. And a, and with a contraption roof to frustrate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it looks really good. I think our friend from New York is getting one, and he's he as he told me that was in a black spider. And he said, I'm not sure what I'm doing about this. <laughs> oh, isn't he special? <laughs> no, he was, he was offering it to us. Oh. We, we want that. His crumbs, his leftovers. I mean, those are some good crumbs. That's a, the spiders. I've driven that car. His, his black one is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, again, it's like another uh, car. It, you just get into the spider wherever you want. You're going to be fine. So it's, much, a, it's, it's a clicky, beautiful experience. Because I, I, I don't know about you guys, but like to me, like GT4 is a very nice car, but the spider makes it magic. And the, uh, the GT4 RS is wonderful, but I bet you the spider is like that level better you know i don't know i bet it is i bet oh, it is god spike we have a gt3 rs coming <laughs> in we've got this oh you know ST? Yeah. i've been on a bit of a little spree i don't know what to even say well hey hold on okay. i wanted to talk about this and i totally forgot about it so uh oh, oh. 
And Johnny, you can kind of confirm that. Hang on, right. Richard's like climbing the wall. He's putting his hands on the glass. Which oh, God, is he wrecking the house nuts. again? <laughs> Took me a month to put the house in order after the last visit. It's just a little Windex. <laughs> No, 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 no. Tell him to get his. I all just right, all right, get his all right, all right, off right. the glass. Oh uh, wait! Now he's touching his butt and putting. Look, look, <laughs> and then putting his hand on the glass. Richard, hey buddy, sit down. I'm so sorry. All right, Johnny. Would you hurry up and put him in the car? He, he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. Like a dog. Can't we just leave the dog in the car? Richard can be put in the you car. You used to have kids, didn't you? Don't they didn't you do this. this stage. No, we didn't have that. Really? Dale was not a wall climber, you, you know, handprint lever, house wrecker. Um, I forget, but I think, no, my kids are really good, too. I yelled at them a lot, told them not to do things, and they didn't. But they, uh, I had one used to cut up the sheets and stuff. It was funny. Cutting up sheets? Yeah, yeah. My favorite story is when, when the the lizard died in the toilet and they Twice. pissed on it. Twice. And then told you to get it. Twice. That happened twice. And it usually is the harbinger of spring in my home when there's an animal in the toilet. But I think I managed to seal all the holes. You know what I wanted to talk about? And I wanted Johnny here. This uh, information that came from the deep, deep web, the dark web. Is that what they call it? The dark web. I've got, I've got these sources now. Uh, two or three of them, I don't know who they are. Some of them, sometimes I communicate information on the show. I'll go, I, I, this is somewhat reliable. This information came to me from a couple of folks. I don't know who they are or how they're involved in Porsche and didn't ask. But this person laid out pretty much every car between now and 2028. Really? Every new vehicle that's coming along. Really? And so I preface this... And I, I don't even know if I... I feel like now I have information that is going to ruin all the surprises. But I, I also don't know if any of it's true. It's like or that not. kid that gave away the, the secrets, the U.S. government secrets on his yes. on his chat room. What was the name of that guy? Something weird. Yeah, there's been a bunch of them. But I sent you the list, right? Yep. And it, it, it it's kind of the order and the general year of every new Porsche model that's coming out between now and 2020. And it rings true. And and Johnny. You're you're closer to the the car journalism than we are, so yes. See if you can confirm any of this stuff. All right. Okay. It, what are this we is talking? All unconfirmed information. What are all we right. talking? Uh, the June eighth announcement. He's v- saying you guys are right. Uh, that is the ST. It'll be announced on June eighth. Yeah. And the ST. This is deep throat. But my go, my go best guess mean? on the ST is it's the GT three RS motor, so the five hundred and twenty horse with a manual, so the GT three manual in a like nine eleven R type body. Okay, so awesome. it's basically a nine eleven. I have more news though. See if you've heard any of this okay. stuff. And again, I don't know if any of this is true, and I'm not going to stake my reputation on it. Not that I have any well, reputation left. left your reputation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about my reputation. If you don't know that about me yet, um, somewhere this year, nine nine two point two is going to be unveiled. Yes, and there'll be. Have you heard that? It, towards the end of this the year, year right? Yeah, and it'll Rensport, be Rensport, maybe. It's or a good, before it's, it's Rensport's a good guess. Rensport reunion. Okay, twenty twenty four. But I know a little bit about the what the point two will be. What's and that? Hybrid. So everything... So really? The, so the base 911 will not be hybrid. The Carrera S will be hybrid, GTS. And the turbos will be hybrids as well. GT3s, of course, will remain naturally aspirated. So... All right, here we go. 2024. A lot of news. Macan EV. Tycon facelift. Panamera facelift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All sounds right. Plus, Cayman and Boxster uh, EVs are coming. Hold on. Wow. I'm not done. I'm, I'm, I'm communicating what I've been sent by somebody. 2025, Boxster EV, all electric Boxster. Yeah. We've seen it going around the track on the internet, right? Yep. Two years from now. 2026, Hypercar. 2026, I'm going to repeat, Hypercar. Say it for like a Frenchman. Hypercare. Lufke Kult. Hyper. Now Casper wants me to go on his podcast. The Lufke Kult guy. Lufke Kult. Let me tell you how to say it. Um, I am going to go on your show, Casper. 
Um, okay, but 2026, they're going to announce a hypercar, or it's going to be rolled out in 2026, which would mean some sort of announcement before then. What is that car? Is that the GT1 we've been hearing about? None of us know. Yeah, that we don't know. But in that same year, uh, Cayenne EV. Yes. 992 GT2 RS 2026 Ooh. is the hypercar, Cayenne EV, and 992 GT2 RS. 2027. Something called the K1 SUV, a seven-seater yep. yep. SUV. I think that's coming earlier, but that is happening. Three-row for sure. Yeah, bigger, bigger Cayman. 2028. Can you believe that we are giving you this information right now? The new 911 model 994. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. This is why you've been listening to us for five-plus years for this moment right here, if this information is accurate. Yeah. But it sounds like it is accurate, it right? It all rings true. Every, everything, I, the, I, the only thing I've never heard anyone outside of this show really talk about is the hypercar. They're going to do one. They do hypercars. There's, look at this message. Yeah. Deep yeah, 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 yeah. Now, anybody can type anything in a DM to Instagram, <laughs> but... Yeah. No, that's good stuff. Maybe it's true. I but just, look at that logo right there, right? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, so, so the... What what is that the, logo? The Ren there? Sport. The Ren Sport. Uh, they might show that three row. I've been hearing a lot of buzz about the three row, and also the other, by the way, the other thing about the point two, the you know the Dakar, mm. you might be able just to get any nine eleven as a Dakar. Oh God! It's just an option because it's just but basically it's like weird. it's the front end lift just up, and then they put one on the rear, and then they just leave them up. And then that that makes it a safari. AMC Eagle reappears. Yeah, yeah, Do you think Porsche gets later. upset when we report things like no, this? No, they love it. They love it. Yeah, of course. Because I, you know, that June eighth announcement got picked up all over the place. That got picked up all over the place. Our asses are on the line on that one. I I, <laughs> I have no doubt. I know, gonna be I know a lot about the ST. I'll just put it like that. And uh, that's is I I know someone who saw it. And says it looks killer, but it's just oh. it's basically a 911R. I think it might have the double bubble roof. Well, see, a 911R is different than a GT3 RS. I hope it, it I, I'm no, wants, no, 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 I want something that's uh, better suited for roads. That's what this is. This is oh, this is okay. again, again, it's oh. friends in clear water. Well, it's, they, yeah, I know. But again, it's, it's, all it's the it's the motor. It's a motor out of the GT3 RS with right. the manual, and I think it's manual only oh. is what I'm hearing. This is going to be killer. Oh. And then it's going to be oh. like a big, sexy, wide body with no wings. It's yeah. Just, yeah. It's, it's, be 9/11. it's perfectly we, time for us, Suckerman, because yeah, yes. we've got two PDK cars coming in. It will be our, our second and our third, and we'll be in the mood for a manual gearbox. I always like a good manual me- gearbox when it's mated to a balanced machine. Mm-hmm. That's totally fine. And you may not uh, think that's who I am, but that's who I am. I don't like it when I feel like I'm slowing a vehicle down, but I bet you that SD is going to be a dream. A dream. The 911R was a killer machine. And if Zuckerman, if we make it to 2026. Well, well, I, I will, but I check out 2029. That's what I think. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> yes. We will get our first hypercar. We will get our first hypercar. We've got to do it. We've got to be in whatever that new club is, the GT1 or whatever. At 110%, we cannot let our New York friend. If, if the hypercar is all electric, will that upset you no i'm i'm on board now you are i'm on board the with Tycons see, made all, all of this stuff that's happening when i see the future i think it's the right time now i'm gonna guess that this is gonna be a all hybrid. electric i think it's gonna be hybrid i don't after driving that ferrari 296 and just what a wonderful experience isn't that, that was, thing the greatest it's the we greatest we talked car. about it isn't yeah it? yeah, yeah it was the greatest it yeah. was your idea yeah. i requested it i got it you were right, Johnny. Yeah, you were right. It's we, rare that I would say that, but that car. <laughs> thank you, Spike. Put it in the book. <laughs> really was a dream. It now, was a dream. We, the best modern Ferrari I've ever. And now we got to get Zuckerman. I don't want a Roma. I want to get the two nights. I don't want a Roma. I'm telling you, you would love the the Roma. So you, it's you so got to at least try it. Okay, get it over here. All right, all right. Well, you got to call. You got to yeah, text we'll get, we'll get Alex. Roma, yeah, yeah. We and see that. if she will send it over. Yeah, I have it dropped off here. We can do that. They're right in West LA. Yeah. She's cool. She'll come out. She'll deliver. What was the last Ferrari you drove? You had a 488, didn't you? Yeah, that's the last one I drove. And I, we had a 488. I drove it two or three times, and that was good enough for me. It's not a very good drive to, to price ratio. I think that's, that's why, why Roma, he's saying yeah. the Roma, you're going to like it. The, the 296 has a very stiff seat. 
Very, very stiff seat. It's very well, low to you, the ground. Well, real quick, though, you were in the uh, Seto Fiorino. Yes. You weren't in the regular 296, which I is was much not. more luxurious. It has like a leather roof. I prefer the Seto Fiorino. Yeah, I haven't driven it. But um, I'm, t- I'm telling you, the Roma is like, you know, like like a, when, a, when, a, when a Turbo S is really good. Yeah. And it's like, I love it. That's what this is. And then it's sexy looking. It's just like, you look at it, you're like, oh, the hips, like the, you know, the the, the long nose. Like, it's just, you know, wh- wh- everything Moise hated about it. <laughs> I didn't care about, it. I mean, the design was fine. I, I'm having of trouble. Of the 296? Te- I, I'm having trouble telling all the Ferrari. They're, they're starting to yeah. blend like blur, like McLaren's blur. But the driving experience it's was di- was different. It's the best. It yeah. was different. And I, and I enjoy a nice 488. I think that's a great car What's cool well. is, you know, the... Um, the 296, they benchmarked the McLaren 720S, and now the McLaren 750, they benchmark the 296. So now they're swinging back the other way. Wow. So that thing, is, I'm so excited about that. Nuclear car. war. Hey, Amen. Bring it. But you really stand out in it. That's the only. That's the other thing. Even in LA, you stand out. Yeah. You don't. You just don't. I'm not seeing a lot of new Ferraris out there these days. Hard to get. But uh, there's there's Ferraris doing so good right now. It's just it's unbelievable. <laughs> They're all doing good. Yeah, they are. Lambo. I hear the Storato. I mean, I drove the Storato prototype. It was amazing. And now I, everyone who drove the at the launch the other day, they're just like, I was on Ferris' show, and he was just like, he's like, it's the best Lamborghini ever. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of how I felt when I drove the prototype. Did we feel this way 10 years ago when we drove these cars? You were really taken when you first got that Huracan. That must have been seven, eight years that's ago. That's a perfect thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it's a winner. Then and now. I mean, remember the They're 458, winners. how like remarkable that was when it came out? I don't. I didn't drive that. Uh, I haven't that driven was, one of those. Now, to but, be fair, um, I drove a hyper cheaty one that was chipped and had challenge suspension, but still, it was awesome. It was like, wow. Yeah, there's a lot of good cars you could just jump right into. They seem to be just as expensive as they were back then. They're I was more. pricing the 458 the other day. You know, yeah. you get you get the special ones that are up around five or 600 yeah, still. Yeah, like, yeah. what's going on? Inflation. It looks well, just like the new one. But like I drove, I had a Turbo S the other day, and uh, it was two thirty. You know, I remember when it was like fully, fully loaded. They'd yeah, be that like car five. This was two thirty with no options. We had like, nice, is it a cab? No, it was it was a hard top. It had it had a nice interior, but like not that many options. I should request that car. Oh, it's, it's good. It's really good. It's yeah, really I know. Good. I've always loved those. They're great yeah, cars. That, that's are. a one car and done situation. Yeah, if you want one sports car, it's a Turbo S Turbo. Mm. And it looks really good. This one you would have dug because it was that agate gray, and then it had like just chocolate brown. I think it was. It was that's a nice combination. It was Cohiba or one of them, you know, really nice brown interiors. It was great. Here's and another. it's a real metallic silver color. I don't know what they call it. And that's a really nice yeah. look on that car. This is that one. It's like silver, but it has a lot of green in it. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. It. it was just it was great. It was Zuckerman great. has a new car. Another one? Yeah. It's every Please. Thursday he's buying cars. Not the, it's not the 356? Nope. No. This what, car's what? white. Oh, what? You, Tell him what you bought. A 1971 911S. Oh, yeah. Nice car. In ivory. A 2.2 S in ivory. And what a fantastic car. You can see that car really takes you in the direction of the 73 RS. You see where they're going. That 2.2 S engine is the basis of the 2.7 right. liter engine in the RS. It is so character filled in in that 71 uh, in that iteration where you got to get it to 5,000 RPMs and comes on cam and it starts screaming and the car is smooth. It's light. I'm going to, I need to do a little fettling on the MFI through Marco to get those. Oh, you have to, to. Those yeah, are tricky. They're, they're very, they're very Once finicky. Once you get them, they're, they're great. Yeah. You got to get them. You got to work. It's like, uh, it's like a jeweler. You will, you will like this. The car is, is super I dialed. I one. I love them. It, it's super dialed in right now and what it just needs. When it's cold right now, yeah. it's not running as good as it should. Right. When it's warm, when when the engine's warm and the injectors are all warmed up, it really how does, goes. How does that front end feel? You so feel a light. big difference there, though. This this uh, It feels planted. My 70S was just planted in the front in the way that my 73T was not. I always preferred the 70S. Mm. 
to the 73. It's planted and it's incredibly light. It is a mm-hmm. real delight to drive. Yeah. And, and I and I think I will drive it tomorrow because I want to get it on sunset and just and feel it'll be hot tomorrow too, so it'll be it'll be good. We're going to drive tomorrow, right? Yeah, in the morning. There we go. That's what, you know, what's so great about, you know, the, the old stuff is that the, you know, like the weather really changes how they drive. You know? Oh yeah. Not, not 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 just tires. It's like A car like that yeah. If it's too hot, you'll have a miserable time. <laughs> but like yes. Pat Long has this, uh, it's like, a, you know, it's like a 73 RS prototype, basically. It's like, it's a 72. It's a recreation of these four mules that were running around Vysok. Mm-hmm. And I, I drove it and it was, remember it was really, really cold. And I drove it that and like, we couldn't get anything up to temperature. So it was, everything right. was rough. It didn't want to shift. You know, it was just right. like. And, you know, it was just kind of, it wasn't the greatest experience, but like, he's like, yeah, come back and drive it when it's warm. <laughs> it's like, okay. well, that's why you have a big car collection. Well, that's one of the reasons, yeah. Uh, in general, a lot of vintage stuff doesn't get driven in the summer out here because it gets too hot. Yeah. I always had one 911 that would have AC in it. I had a 73 911S, the Otis Chandler car that had AC, only so I could drive it in the summer. And it still wasn't fun. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. It's, it's gotta, not fun. Yeah. It's got to be the. It, w- when I commuted a lot from Malibu and I was getting up at six in the morning, that was fantastic in the summer. That that was a good time. You could drive in the morning, drive home right. later at night when it was cool. Now, I had both of these cars in Beverly Hills and I needed them ferried to the garage. The se- I'm sorry, the 71S and the 73RS. And my son, lucky young man, drove the 71 and was raving about it. And then he got in the RS. I think it's the second time he soloed in that car. And he can't get over yeah. how great that car. I got it. I've never now. driven a seventy three. I got it. Oh my drive. god! I got it. I, I know. I know. I got it. He, he was. He, he said the same thing. Everyone says it's fast by today's standards. It handles so great. It goes. You think you want to be somewhere? You're there. It handles telepathically. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. It would be great to line up all of the moment cars. In our opinions, what we consider the moment cars, and 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 show them because they really stand out. Like we, cool. if you just went like a eighty nine seventy three seventy s fifty eight Speedster, just the cars, right. you would. I think folks who are new to the Porsche thing would understand how important it is to kind of stay in those zones because when you drive them, you don't forget. You go boom, look at that. Yeah. It feels perfect. It's a moment, and then it disappears. Ninety eight. I was going to, you know, it used to be 98 C2S for right. me, but now this 95 has got my head spinning. <laughs> a whole new thing just happened. And you sold two of the 4.0s. I that's, know. That was, that's the those one. Are other, that's another one. That's the yeah. one. It's still out there. They Everything there. exists. Yeah, yeah. They go no, out no, no, there. No, no, they come back. But when it comes down to it, if, if you asked me today, I would say 73 RS is sure. the all-time greatest. See, I would. The, I think the best car I ever drove was that 4.0. I, I and I got to do like I think 50 laps in it at the at the Porsche Experience Center. So I, they let me do a second run and just I couldn't. What believe. an animal! The thing is an animal. It's just it's just perfect. It's, it's just, just perfect. Yeah. It's just and you know it's just after that. That was the end of 997. So just they got bigger and 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 you know like it's just a great sound, oh. great shifting feel, brake steering, everything's just, just everything, right, yeah. just right. Yeah, because they put a lot of race car into it. Yeah, like like with the 73, there's a lot of racing. You know, it was, it was like you know, Vysok was involved heavily, and it's just I don't wow. know, miracle of a car. I love that thing. What what modern has really stuck out like that, Suckerman? We've owned a lot of stuff. Do you what, what do you think GT2 back to GT2 RS? GT2 RS. Oh yeah. GT2 RS. Nine, the, the 911 R is a clo- very Oh, 911 R for sure. Yeah. And, and 991 Speedster, I would yeah. Oh, the Speedster. Yeah. The Speedster. But also, just it, the the 992 GT3 just with a stick is phenomenal. Like but, okay, phenomenal. Here's a here's a question because I had a Speedster. I had an R 991 Speedster. A 911R and a, and a GT2 RS. I kept one of them. I kept a GT2 RS. Yeah. If you had to revisit that decision. If it was me, yeah. I would probably R. keep yeah. the Speedster. Oh, well, you go R, he goes Speedster. <laughs> I, I, but I'm with you on the R. The R was very, very First of all, special. you can't go wrong with any of the three of those cars. Right. You can be very happy for the rest of your life. Yeah. And I love the GT2 RS probably more than the two other cars. But it, it, when it came down to the other two... I would say R. Uh, I, R I, 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 I go with a coupe w- over a cab. I just, just the speed, you know, it's the only 
convertible the GT division's ever done ever. It's the greatest. Yeah, and, and there'd be a lot more now. And I, and there's you know on Angeles Crest there's this one corner, and I've you know I've, I don't know I've driven 500 cars over this one corner, and it was the Speedster was the best. Yeah, and I wasn't going the fastest. Yeah, it was just you know when it's just magic and like, yeah you get in a zone everything's with that car. loaded. And it's just it's just a perfect like you know the, the the shift is perfect and the cars you know flopping over in the right way and oh the sound is right everything yeah, yeah, yeah. everything about that perfect car, yeah. perfect perfect yeah so, so I think go. I'd go speedster we, we just hyped the market in a huge way <laughs> oh ninety fives or look at that bring a trailer sale over there on ninety five nine eleven boy they for not four hundred thousand dollars they are dominating the market there is nothing that's not on bring a trailer now. You name it, it's on there. Well, I We're, think a lot. There's a lot of investment in the car market right now for some reason, which is uh, never good. Do you think but, we'll ever see a Ferrari, a, a, a 250 GTO, on bring a trailer? Yes. Oh, I don't know. There's so few of them. There's like what are there? There's like thirty. That would be hilarious to see that. But why not? Why wouldn't there be? Because because those cars are so fussy. They get up in the big auction houses and everything. I know, but because because the why thing not is, do it differently? Because like Gooding and RM, they you know start licking your butt when you list a car that's going to sell for forty million. Well, the two fifty GTO club is a group of guys. Yeah, it's a yeah. bunch of billionaires. Yeah, of yeah, which yeah. of which Bruce Meyer calls himself the poorest billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Bruce. I mean, he goes whenever I hang out with these guys, I'm the poorest billionaire. He goes, I'm the poorest guy, and I go, you you mean you're the poorest billionaire? <laughs> oh, I feel terrible for you. <laughs> yeah, Bruce. exactly. I've only got a measly one. <laughs> I just remembered I'm the one who coined that phrase, the poorest billionaire. Yeah. Said, yes, the poorest billionaire. Poor I mean, Bruce. I, but the, my point oh, yeah, yeah, is, yeah. they kind of conspire. Whenever somebody's going to let it go, there's they they talk about it. Be careful, and we know this a little bit with the Zagato. Yeah, Ben Clymer. Every once in a while, we'll call, "Hey guys, <laughs> <laughs> be careful." You know, we are the Zagato market. You know, right. if you're going to sell, I, somebody thought we were selling that car and we weren't. But he was. Uh, be careful how but, you do it. But you're right, though. The, the 250 GTO is special money because I, I met. Yeah. Um, I didn't meet. I looked at him. He wouldn't talk to me. But one of the one of the Walton kids. Who has two 250 GTOs? That's a little piggy, don't you think? Uh, well, considering there's how many in the world? If you own Walmart, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, like they are a whole different species of wealthy. It's have crazy. you got? Uh, have you made any progress on this Rolls Royce that so we can do the Rolls Royce show? No, I haven't. I got to do that. I haven't because we already failed the on yeah. the Cadillac show. Yes, Zuckerman sold the Cadillac. Yeah, well, we, Rolls we Royce is evergreen. It. They're always going to be in production. So we well, you got to find one. Yeah, oh, I can do that. I can do that. I, I I just haven't. I've been busy. I've been I've been out. I've been out. Zuckerman, you saw. Uh, I got a new neighbor moving in. I don't know who it is, but a house down the street. But did you see what went, went sailing by my so driveway? Kind of Bentley. All right, this is the second trip you're going to take to my Instagram. What else? Oh, I saw it. Did you see it? Yeah. What? what I, I came out in the morning. I, it looks like to me, it's either it's either the you know it's a four cylinder or a speed six from like approximately 1927, 29. It's it's the Le Mans era. There it is. Look. Yeah. Imagine I'm just walking outside. It's got a number on it, meaning it probably raced <laughs> Le Mans. You know, could be a recreation. And I went out there with my camera, and then this uh, this big guy he comes out talking to the toad. Just you got to back it in. You got to bring it in. And he looks at me. and He goes, "Hello." <laughs> and I went, oh, hi. And then he just turned around and walked away. He's my, that's my kind of neighbor. Doesn't want to meet me. Doesn't right, want to say right. anything. But he's got a big Bentley. But he's got a big Bentley. Do you? Have but any... then I felt like, well, I should really get some cars in my driveway. Right, to, right. To show him that I also arms like race. cars. That's yes. Right. No, I don't want to get an arms. You race, can put your series two in there. <laughs> I felt threatened that he was going to be the new car guy in our shared driveway. Well, <laughs> do you have any affinity for cars of that nature? Yeah. Cause, cause I, you know, I spend- as I get older, I, I'm starting to like that stuff. I don't know that I would ever jump in, but uh, it yeah. seems like fun. That car <sighs> looks like a lot of fun. I just, I spent way too much time like reading about the Bentley Boys and Wolf Bernardo and Le Mans and all that. And I remember I was at the Paris Motor Show and they had like a old car kind of, you know, uh, room. And I walked in there and I'm face to face with like the car the first time Wolf Bernardo won Le Mans. The, the Bentley was sitting there. And I like I started crying. I just was staring at it. And I just started crying. Oh, great! Are you okay. mentally ill? <laughs> I am. Why would you start crying? Because it car? was like it's the car that defined. <laughs> I'm mentally ill, Spike. I'm mentally ill. But it's like 
It's the I forget about who I'm with. <laughs> Normally that story goes over better. <laughs> you don't think it's a little hyperbolic? A little I was crying. I just it was You're just a psychotic break. I'm just, I don't, you know, you spend I don't know a, a thousand hours. No, I wasn't like whimpering. I was just sort of tearing up. Like you know, I, don't know. Exactly I really like I love cars. Leave me alone. We all love cars, Johnny. It's okay. Uh, we're all mentally ill. Like, don't worry. Spun, I don't know, man. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> well, let's let's end the show there. <laughs> and Johnny's tears. Johnny's As tears always. We're river of his tears, Johnny. <laughs> Richard, go get a pair of scissors and stab the couch. <laughs> That's it. Um, we'll see you next week, Spike Scar Radio. Thanks for listening to Spike's Car Radio, brought to you by Hangar 56. Listen to new episodes every Wednesday, and be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your favorite podcasts.